Welcome to Trans Mathematica. I'm James Anderson. Today I'm joined by Mrs. Mullins, the dinosaur lady, who's just published Ten Cretaceous Dinosaurs, a poem for young children. I'll put details of the book in the description below so you can buy a copy for all your young paleontologists. Mrs. Mullins. <laughs> I think that's the first time I've called you Mrs. Mullins because you're my wee sister Ruth, but we'll stick to your author's name today. Mrs. Mullins, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. And how are you? Yep, not so bad. So what does it feel like to be a published author? Very exciting. I can't believe it. It's very exciting indeed. Thrilled. So you, you were a primary school teacher. So how did you come to segue from primary school teacher to author? Right, well, I have been a primary school teacher and I've done through many different year groups and I retired. And so it gave me so much free time because as you <laughs> well, yeah, as you can believe, being a primary school teacher, you're forever planning the next lesson or doing assessments or writing reports or gathering resources. And so when I retired, all of a sudden, I had all this free time. It was like, whoa. So I got to, I started thinking to myself, what am I going to do with this mm. free time that I've got? And so um, it just happened to be that I liked uh, learning about the stars and about the planet, and I joined, joined a little astronomy, my local astronomy group. And then I thought about some of the children in my class and the dinosaurs, and I know how passionate some of the children were about the dinosaurs and they liked to learn about them and they would play. I would put a builder's tough tray out and get the dinosaurs out and they would have grass and trees and I'd put a bit of gravel in and they just, and they knew all the names. So mm. even from maybe three years old, <laughs> they could pronounce these dinosaur names and I'm like, oh, well done you. And they yeah. just loved it. And I just thought, do you know what? For the ones that love the dinosaurs, I want to write you a book. So, yeah, that's how it came about. So, do you think of yourself as a scientist? No, I didn't, actually. It was, I was quite surprised when he said to me, you know, how did you get into science? And I'm thinking, me? Because I always <laughs> think science is test tubes and experiments and things going fizz and bang and things like that. And then I thought, oh, I am. I am actually into science. I love, I want to learn about the stars. I want to know how it all comes about and what the chemical reaction is. I've actually tried to start learning chemistry. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I know. Because I'm just fascinated by it all. And the more that I'm starting to learn, the more I want to learn about science. So it's like, now I'm on the journey. Mm. Yeah. I've, I've started something that's going to last but quite a long time, I think. So, yeah, because and of course, learning about how the world's been formed and all the different things that have happened and all the different times things have gone wrong or you've nearly lost everything. You know, how on earth has life managed just to keep going? I just find it fascinating absolute mind-bogglingly brilliant so yeah you, you'll have to write another book about uh, how <laughs> life evolved on earth yeah uh, the the world is full of dinosaur books what's special about yours oh that's a really good question thank you for that i think with my one i had children in my head i'm sure every dinosaur book's brilliant but I was thinking, if I went back to being three, four years old and being introduced to dinosaurs, what would I want to know? So I thought, I'll have 10 dinosaurs <laughs> for the poem. And I thought, I would want one. I want to know, what was the biggest dinosaur to ever walk on the planet Earth? Mm. So that has to be one. Then I have to have one that flies. And then I'll definitely have to have one that goes into the water as well as being on land. And then, oh, we need T-Rex. Everybody loves mm -hmm. a T-Rex. And I'll need to have 
herbivores and carnivores and omnivores so that when the children are reading the books with the parents or the granny or granddad or the big sister, whoever's sharing the book with them, they can say, oh, do you know what you call that when they only eat meat? And I thought it'll be a good learning tool as well, but in a fun way. Yep. Yeah. Why did you choose the Cretaceous period? Well, the thing is, again, it's a counting down poem. Mm. So most books or poems that I've come across, it goes to 10 to 1, and then all nine come back, and it's back up to 10 again. Well, mm. the asteroid comes so I, I can't <laughs> have all of a sudden there was 10 dinosaurs, a great big asteroid came to the planet Earth, smashed it at 3,000 miles an hour, whatever it was, and then we had more. Mm, no. So I needed it to be the Cretaceous so I could have the number zero or nothing or nil oh. or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so that's why I did that. So that I could actually go ten nine eight seven six five four three two one zero zero. Uh, we do still have some dinosaurs alive today. Yeah, all the all the birds that are around evolved yeah. from avian dinosaurs. But I'll give you zero zero for the big dangerous things that come <laughs> around. Thank you. Oh, there's always spelling rules and different maths rules. There's always an exception, isn't there? Yeah, except when there isn't. So why do you think your... <laughs> you've told us why you think your book will appeal to children. Yeah. But why will it appeal to their parents? Because it's their parents who've got the money to buy the book. Yes. Well, the illustrations are amazing. And I wanted the dinosaurs to be a true reflection of what the dinosaurs would have looked like, but still be friendly and not threatening. And so the illustrations are great. I've put a few kind of different things in there, like my uh, T-Rex has feathers on his arms, mm. and that's actually con quite controversial. Some people think they did, as younger dinosaurs have feathers, and mm. other people say they didn't. But I wasn't there, so I don't know. <laughs> and I'm thinking it'd be a great way to get the parents to interact with the children. If you're sharing the book already, you bought the book, mm. you're mm. reading it to your child, let's say, oh, look, she's got feathers on now. Did they have feathers? Oh, I don't know. What do you think? Mm. And there's also eggs hiding about in the book. And I've done lots of little things to try and get learning to take pillies with the adults. And like I said, I tried to make sure that when the adult's talking to the child, they'll say, oh, do you know that the word for that is? And then pronounce it correctly. So I'm using the parents as teachers, really. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks. <Good> plan. <laughs> Excellent plan. <laughs> thanks. So you said you've got illustrations. Who did the illustrations? Sorry. Who it was, the illustrations? Uh, I beg your pardon? Who did the illustrations? Somebody from the actual uh, Austin and the, from my publishers, they have a, their own in-house um, illustrators. I don't actually yeah. met the person, but they're very, very good. <laughs> <laughs> but it was all done through email and stuff like that. So how did you find a publisher? There is a book full of names of different publishers and I basically went through it but it takes a long time because it mm. says you know it has every publisher so it's not just children's it'll mm. have uh, horror thrills uh, thrills um loads of different adult non-fiction you know loads of different genres every type of book and so I just basically went through it alphabetically and just sent them my work and said, would you like to publish it? So how many publishers did you approach? I don't, know. I don't know. I think, well, the thing is, I've got different books that I tried for this one. I think I sent it to 12. 12. 
pretty good getting a hit in they've the first been, well. Yeah, they, they've been... I had a different book that I wrote first and I'd sent them that and they'd written back to me to say, thank you, but not quite a thing, no thank you. So I thought, well, you're really polite and you're kind. You, you obviously mm. understand that it's nice to let somebody know that you're not going to do it. So I only wrote with this one to the 12 that had answered me. Mm. <laughs> so to help other people, could you email me the details of the book you mentioned with the, all of well, the... Yeah, absolutely. I think okay, it's so... out every year and it just gives all the publishers. Also does uh, America, I think, Canada. But I only got up to, I think I got up to H <laughs> of <laughs> British ones before I got my publisher. So <laughs> I'm still the other half. So if I'll put details in the description below. Okay. Do you have any plans for future books? Well, yes. As you can imagine, there are, as you know, I'm sure you know, there's three different eras to the dinosaurs. So I've actually already got in stored on my computer the Jurassic, 10 mm. Jurassic dinosaurs, and then... I'll need to do another one for the Triassic. And that means that I've got the whole era of the dinosaurs. But I've also got other ideas for other books yeah. to do with um, children. and But it's all children-led books. Yeah. I, I've ordered a first edition of your book. Uh, as you're my wee sister, can I come round and will you sign it for me? Oh, I'd be absolutely thrilled to. That'd be <laughs> wonderful. Of course. Yeah. Excellent. And if you do publish any more books, I hope you'll come back to Transmathematica and tell us all about them. Oh, thank you. Thank you for talking to me today and my asking pleasure. me all these questions. Bye. Bye.